I'm Marcus. And I'm Preston. And welcome to Filmaholics Unscripted. Today, we're going to be doing a review for 10 Cloverfield Lane. But first, intro. <laughs> 10 Cloverfield Lane stars John Goodman, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and John Gallagher Jr. It's directed by Dan Tr Trachenberg. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not, I have no idea. Trachenberg. And it's his first feature-length film. The basic plot to this film is that the character that Mary plays gets into a car accident, wakes up in a bunker with John Goodman and uh, John Gallagher Jr. And they're telling her that there was a chemical attack of some sort outside and that they have to stay in the bunker and they can't leave. We are going to be getting into some spoilers, so if you don't want any of that, which you, when you go to see this movie, you don't want to have anything ruined for you. It's very good to go in fresh. So skip ahead by just clicking right here, and it'll bring you to the end of the video, and uh, you'll get our final thoughts there. You, you need to see this movie. Yes. I think I think it's definitely definitely worth a watch. The entire thing is so suspenseful, and John Goodman in it is just absolutely phenomenal. At the top of the game. Brilliant, brilliant performance in. So many different ways. You, you, he, he comes in and there's times where he comes in and you're like, okay, it, 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 this guy's not totally crazy. He makes sense. And then in the same sentence, sentence he'll change it and you're like, what? Whoa. And Get me away from his acting is great with it. And, and he totally comes off threatening a lot of the time. I mean, I wouldn't mess with him in the, <laughs> by how he is in this movie. No. And uh, I don't, when I said spoilers before, I, I don't really plan on getting into spoilers with what happens in the bunker. Because that's all, that's just, I don't want to get into that. I think if you've seen the movie, you know, and it doesn't need to be talked about. It's just amazing. Everything that happens in the bunker, I was a huge fan of. It's what happens out of the bunker at the very end of the movie that I plan on spoiling because I think that needs to be discussed. But, but the one thing I will say about in the bunker is the beard. <laughs> when that thing goes away... That's when things hit the fan. Like once that beard's gone, it's just oh crap. When he walked into the room, I think I heard Jay. He was like, "What?" <laughs> we went with our friend Jay, by the way, to see the movie. And when he comes in the room, clean shaven, it was. I, I'm not. Was, what exactly? Just off putting. Even, yeah, I, I. I guess it's because he was just the the old scrubby, and now suddenly he's like, he's he in a nice shirt. Whole, yeah, he has a nice shirt, shirt and his now hair's suddenly, combed and nice. I, and it's, I guess it's just a very threatening change, considering it just that made him it's look just so the two of creepy. them now. Yeah. I, well, it's, he even says it's just the two of us now, like it was always meant to be. Oh, yeah, he... Well, he all nailed. three performances. Yeah, they were all... really are only three in the entire movie. <laughs> I liked Emmett. I thought he was great. Oh, he, he pulled Mary did off. good. They... See, the, the, the dynamics between all of them just worked. That when two of them were plotting against Howard here and there, and then, oh, they think maybe things are okay now, and then... It just goes back to bad. And, <laughs> and then, you know, Howard's pulling one of them aside, and... You're the, always questioning, too. Uh, you're questioning what's going on outside the entire movie, and you're also questioning what's going on with John Goodman the entire movie, and then... Is you he learn about crazy? Is he all crazy? Yeah, the thing like with his daughter, that's like a whole other mystery that just comes out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting that to happen. I mean, I, I knew there was something up with the daughter, but then you find out, like, oh, they're in Chicago or whatever it was, and you're like, okay, you accept that, and then you find another twist about the daughter situation that I did not see coming. But to get out of the, the bunker and, and all those kinds of spoilers, once she gets outside, things just kind of... Spiral? Yeah, and... Uh, like this is ship going down when it spirals. Yeah, see what I did there. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I didn't see it, <laughs> but um, some people have said that they like the ending and and how they go about it. and not so much that they they liked it, but they understood it and it it made sense and and they weren't upset about it. And I saw another review where they said the whole movie is built on a mystery, and when when you do that with a film, everyone gets their own idea of what they think it's going to be or what they think it should be. So no matter what the answer you give the audience, they're not going to be satisfied. So I kind of like that. But either way, it's not so much what happens at the end that I didn't like. It's just it kind of happens so quickly. The pacing of the movie just goes from a nice, slow, suspenseful to just... Bam, 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 like all this stuff just happening and you have to just kind of take it in. It, it throws you off a bit. I yeah, mean, I was not a fan of, and I'm okay with a sudden change, a, a 
for when something gets drastic, something being a lot different from how it was. I'm okay with that. But I didn't like the the style they went for. They, they everything's still a, even when she gets out, she's looking around and you see there's some birds and everything shaky cam. The, and then suddenly sh there's suddenly sh aliens are showing up and she's running across the yard and the camera's going every which way and how about how about now she's running but how about we just keep the same at least the same similar style of filmmaking just follow with a gindler just or a gimbler. Fo follow, follow her show her running show her dive and slam the door in <gasps> or you know that's fine so animated <laughs> but i i just yeah i didn't have a problem with the change in in pace so much because they did have to give some kind of explanation, some kind of yeah. drastic. But I didn't like the way they executed well, the it. The pacing wasn't just done through how fast events occurred. It was how they started editing it. There was yeah, a lot of suddenly, quick cuts. Suddenly, and, that I agree, totally agree with. And the, the shaky cam makes everything feel sped up. And it was just everything about the ending, the whole pacing changed. You could feed me information really fast, but when you just... Cram it in there with a fast editing style as well. That's when it really They were started. trying to make you, I guess, feel what a sudden did. rush of adrenaline. But I didn't need to not be able to see and get half dizzy to feel an adrenaline rush. And then... Well, I, it, it wasn't going to catch me like that anyway. Because the aliens, I wasn't a huge fan of how they looked. No. They do. But they were You they do were even the space mentioned, Yeah, I was going to say, uh, other reviews, like Chris Stuckman said, it, when he thought about it some more, they do drop hints and clues throughout the film to give you a heads up about what's going to happen at the end and I didn't even catch that one and you but I mean I, I remember when I remember the scene but and I didn't it says click. you should make Howard tell you about his space worm theory or theory about space worms or something and what do you know space worms yeah I mean, they're not legitimate worms but they do have like a wormy thing going on at least the dog looking wormy thing yeah had it. I wasn't a huge fan of how it looked but it wasn't horrible the, yeah you also didn't like the um the ship exploding yeah i didn't like that apparently these aliens have whatever basically annihilated the earth or a good portion of it and the ship picks up a car with one little human and then all she has to do is take Malt a newspaper off. stick it in a bottle light it on fire and apparently she's got a really good arm chuck she it got, in she went she got kind of close and I then the entire the entire, have you ever tried to throw something straight up in the air? It's a, it, it's a it's movie. A and then the entire ship explodes. The entire ship. Well, me and ship. Jay said, you know, uh, earlier the smoke stuff that was emitting, that caught on fire. So we think that maybe, you know, that being up inside the ship blew it up. I think that's a design flaw. But at the same time, it had like an organic style mouth. So, so then why was it blowing up if it was alive? Why isn't it burning internally? Well, if the gas exploded. I'm just saying. It it didn't make sense. The whole the rest of the film felt so tight, and then it was just... The rest of the film was just... going all Avengers. It's like the giant things flying through New York City are blowing up. And yeah, it did kind of end I, up feeling I, like I that didn't, a bit. I didn't... It, it would have been cool if she'd taken down an entire ship, but... I think it would have been cool if she would have come out, and it was more like an apocalyptic wasteland. <laughs> you could have gone that route, too. But if you were gonna that one, I just feel would have been easier to pace and everything, and show to the viewer without it getting so much. And she still could have picked up a radio signal of some kind. Still yeah. could have ended the film the same way. Yeah, because they wanted to end with like some sort of thing going to a, a sequel, but apparently they wanted to go the route of aliens. Yeah, and I find that just less interesting, I guess. But mostly, I just hate the pacing of the ending. Otherwise, it's not the worst ending. No, it wasn't but... horrible. It was kind of a letdown compared to the rest of the film. But at the same time, right. I still want to see the film again really bad. So it's, so it can't have been that bad. Yeah, it couldn't have been that bad. Plus, the rest of the film was just that good. I mean, everything about it. Like you were saying earlier about the dynamics of the characters. And Emmett, you had said to me, you know, he did a good job of not shining. Right, he didn't. He was... Cl clearly, he's not. He's the third character. He's, he's not the third one. wheel. And he's very good at... Just having conversations with both of them and being a part of the story, but not taking the forefront. Not taking the forefront, and letting you focus on these two characters. 
And I, the actor did a perfect job there, I, I think. I think I think that all of them really just nailed it. I mean, every last person. And Bradley Cooper with his awesome cameo that we weren't aware of until uh, earlier today. Um, he's the boyfriend on the phone call. It, Go figure. I, I didn't even... Like the you voice said, there goes like the budget. Some, yeah, that, the movie was made on $5 million, which I think is pretty uh, amazing. I so would have guessed. It's an amazing, an amazing first film. For this director and on a incredibly low budget so he just proved himself quite a bit i mean the same thing happened with deadpool that was a super low budget so, and first I time mean, director yeah no i mean that was like 80 million but compared to superhero movies that, yeah. that was a tiny budget but yeah props to the director for getting five great, million yeah for doing it on i mean it's not like there's a lot of locations but he got great performances he you know kept the good tight. actors i mean john goodman yeah he yeah him and Bradley Cooper, that was the five million. <laughs> <laughs> then they built the everything, all the sets. Yeah, they nothing did themselves. was the only CGI. I think that's the other problem with the ending is is that there's CGI out of nowhere, and there really wasn't the throughout the, film, the rest of the film. Right, it's, it's just a, all very real. Oh, I, I want to see it again, though. I do. So to get to our final thoughts, um, great acting, great directing, great great directing. A really tight script. Suspenseful. Very suspenseful film. A little bit of a letdown of an ending. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But not horrible. And then definitely a must-see. Yeah, I, I enjoyed myself. Ab- absolutely. If you get a chance, go see this in the theater. Yeah, it, it's definitely more impactful there. It's not one of those movies like Mad Max where you need to see it in theaters, but it's definitely it would be a lot more fun to see it in theaters. As far as an overall rating... I'm I'm right on that like four to four and a half. That's exactly out of five. Uh, so can I say four point two five? Yeah, four. It gets a four point two five out of five. See you next time. <laughs>